Now, on the gates of hell, which is, this is a life-size photograph of it. It's a big set of doors that was created, intended to be at a decorative arts museum in Paris. Um, Rodin was partly inspired by the gates of paradise, that, those famous doors, uh, but he wanted to do kind of a contrary thing, obviously, and have the gates of hell based on the divine comedy, uh, Dante's Inferno, that particular chapter of the three-part three book, or three-part story. And the idea was that this was indicative of where our lives were at in the sense that we're always in turmoil, we never know what's always happening to us, and there's this kind of contrast between should we prepare for death or should we live life and then death just happens or should I live my life now and not worry about what's going to happen or you know there's all this kind of tangled up and it still exists obviously this isn't anything that's new but it's like where do we place ourselves you know how do we justify what it is we're doing it's like well, I'm preparing for a place beyond me, so I kind of don't have to deal with my life now, or do I spend more time in my life now and not worry about tomorrow? You know, there's all that kind of discussion. And that's really what this is about. And it's where we start to get something like the thinker placed here, just above the door, for exactly that reason. So is thinker pondering what's going on around him that he's going to soon be in hell? Or is he pondering what could happen to him? Or what will happen to him? Or what could not happen to him if he makes a different choice? And that's why there isn't really an answer for the entire piece. And that was really Rodin's goal, was not to resolve it with the gates of hell. This wasn't to explain it and give you an answer. It was to raise questions for you so that you could then decide how you want to interpret, some, to interpret something in many ways as basic as this kind of story of heaven, life, and hell, that sort of triangle. How is that interpreted by us? It is completely open for interpretation. So I don't want anybody to think that something called the gates of hell is like this damning thing, you know, that's sitting there illustrating hell. Because that's not what it's illustrating. It's not just a picture of hell. It's a picture of a much, much broader, broader story that we can talk about that has to do with struggle and emotion and all these other things that are current in our lives at any given moment, what it is that's trying to be addressed here. And that's what Rodin was, was you know, trying to say. Yeah? Can you just tell me something about the three figures? Yeah, the three figures at the top, you know, originally, the idea was, here was the door, and then on this side, was, it was to be flanked by a life-size Adam, and on that side, flanked by a life-size Eve. That was how the original design was meant to be. And so Adam completed, I mean, uh, Rodin completed Adam during his lifetime. He never completed the full-size Eve in his lifetime. He created a full-size Eve, but he never completed it. And so what those are, from a technical standpoint, are three identical statues of Adam. They're smaller versions of it, because they're about 34 inches tall, 37 inches tall. Um, and what he did was he took, the, he took three casts of, uh, three plaster casts of Adam, rearranged the arms, you know, like move the limbs, and turn them all differently. Their heads are all cranked forward, and they're called the Three Shades, which are characters in Dante's Inferno. And what they're doing is looking down into the abyss. And part of it was to create not just visual weight, but emotional weight, this emotional burden on the thinker, on the central character of the gate. So that, that's what they're placed there for. And so it was one of the reasons why this worked out really well here in that we're able to silhouette them behind that window. And I love how it almost creates a halo effect. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's kind of a nice little metaphor there, which I think is really, really interesting. Because I, I you know, as many, there's eight 
of the gates of hell that are, that are created. They were all created after Rodin died because he never finished it. Um, you know, it's never lit like this, like a halo behind it. It always is just against a wall. But I love that additional metaphor we've added to this by creating this halo behind them. Where are they? Um, where are they? They're kind of all over. The best place to get one right now is in Stanford. You can go see it at the garden there, at the exhibit at there. It's there permanently. But there's also one in Philadelphia and one in Zurich, and you know they're kind of scattered around, and they've, they've just been newer casts, like from the 80s and 70s, 80s, and 90s, um, 1970s, 80s, and 90s. And when Rodin first exhibit, you know, he started on this in 1880. And then in 1900, there was the Paris Exposition where he was showing it. And at that time, he had a full plaster cast of it. And he had all the plaster casts of the major statues. Like, some of these, some of these are kind of embedded in, like, you know, you can see this kind of swirl, like, here, you know. And then others are applied, you know, you can kind of see where they're more three-dimensional. Like, this is applied, and they're applied, Paolo and Francesco. And, and Francesca, the, the man falling, you know, which is great. I mean, when the door opens, it's so cool because then that guy like moves, you know. Um, and the thinker and the figures up above and the three shades, all, all of those. At the exposition, he had the plaster cast of this delivered full size. And then he was going to place all the smaller sculptures on it. But he ran out of time because he was late. So what he did was he exhibited this full-size plaster cast, just like this, and then on pedestals around the room, he set the sculptures, just like we have here, that were meant to be on there. Well, the critics loved the doors as they were, without all those big sculptures on it. Because they said, if you put those on, it's going to make it way too heavy, it's not going to be as interesting, and it's not going to look as classical, there's going to be something avant-garde about it that we don't really like. We think it's wonderful. Mr. Rodin, what you have done. It's perfect. Well, he got furious about that because he said, that's not what my door is about. I want all these sculptures on there. I want, you know, he wanted to put 60 more pieces on there that eventually were put on, on this, on this cast, uh, but it wasn't that plain door. And so what he did was he stopped work on, work on it then in 1900, and he never completed it during his life after that because of the, the press, the heat he got from the press. So he worked on it from 1880 to 1900, stopped in 1900, never placed the sculptures on there, and then you know, died in 1917. So he still was another 17, seven, almost 18 years uh, with never completing this. So it wasn't until long after his death, you know, 70 years after his death, that they then decided to recreate the, the actual doors.